All right, we've been in a series um, simply uh, called Do You Believe? And uh, so week, week number one, I don't, don't want to spend a lot of time recapping, but, but week number one was uh, we asked the question, do you believe that you love Jesus? And I know that's really elementary when you think about it. Like, what, what do you mean? Of course, yeah, I love Jesus. But you'd be surprised, and we kind of got into the weeds on this, how the enemy will, will try to talk you out of believing that you love Jesus, particularly because of past um, actions on your part, failures, disappointments. And, and he'll, he'll, even, he'll even say things like, uh, well, you, you, know, you know that scripture that says, you know, all things work together for the good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Well, obviously, that doesn't apply to you. You're disqualified because after what you did this week, and the things that you said, you certainly can't love God. Otherwise, you wouldn't have done what you did. All right? So he'll, he'll try to talk you. Don't let the enemy talk you out of the fact that you do love Jesus. Uh, week number two, we talked about believe that Jesus is God. And again, that's so elementary. You're like, well, of course I do believe that, right? But, but if you believe he's God, and we talked about some of his attributes, and you believe that he's good, and that's one of the attributes of God. And we talked about the immu- immutability of God, that he doesn't change. That means he can never not be good. He's always good, right? Um, so we, we, we talked about that last week. Week three, we talked about believe that Jesus is faithful. Uh, and I know, again, that's, that's elementary, but uh, if you believe that he is the supreme ruler of the universe, you believe he's God, he's the supreme ruler of the universe, you also believe that he's good. And uh, if, if, since he's good, you, you, he called himself, he said, I'm faithful and true. Well, we know that he is. Well, if he's God, the supreme ruler of the universe, he's good. He doesn't change from being good. He's faithful and true. How many know the reason why you can trust someone is because they're true? Yeah. And so if, 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 and he's, and he called you his, why in the world would we ever get all full of fear and anxiety and stress and get all stressed out? I know we do from time to time, right? But we ought to think about that. And by the way, how many of you did your homework assignment this week? How many of you had an opportunity to look at the storm of pressure or the storm of doubt and unbelief or fear and anxiety and use five on five? Five words. Put a muzzle on it. Five words. I'm tapping into his faithfulness. Anybody have had an opportunity to go five on five on the enemy this week? Thank you for your enthusiasm. I appreciate that. And then, of course, this week, so we're all cut up. We're all cut up. Uh, this week, uh, we're, we're, we're just asking the question, do you believe that Jesus loves you? Amen. And I know, I know you're thinking, well, this, again, Pastor, is so elementary. Of course Jesus loves me. I mean, you've been, you've been learning that if you've been in church for a minute or two, especially if you started out as a child in church in Sunday school. How, how many of you remember the song you used to sing? Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes. Jesus loves me. Yes. It's hard when you just say it, huh? Jesus loves me. Yes. Jesus loves me. Why? Because the Bible tells me so. You've been learning that your whole life, many of you. Uh, uh, and And yet, when we get down to it and we're facing storms of doubt and fear and anxiety, sometimes we, we, we question, remember last week, we question the care and the concern of Christ. And so, and so we, we, need to, we need to watch out for that. Uh, but but do, you ever, do you ever wonder why Jesus spent 40 days after the resurrection popping in and out, showing up to various people, having conversations 40 days after the resurrection? Um, Showing up, having conversations, having dialogue with people, uh, letting them know that, that he's there. Uh, why not just show up once, say hi, <laughs> give some parting statements, and then say, I'm out of here, and then ascend up? Well, I guess because he wanted to uh, be an encouragement to his followers, sure. He wanted to bless people, absolutely, absolutely. But there's something a little bit deeper that goes with that. He, he wanted to get them, his followers, to believe. You say, well, pastor, I'm pretty sure, particularly his disciples, already believed. Well, let's, let's take a look. 
you would think, right? Mark chapter 16, verses 9 through 13. Now when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him. Who had been with him? His disciples. As they mourned and wept, and when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. Now, this is talking about the same guys who had been with Jesus for three years in ministry. Three years. They, how many times did they, did they hear him say, I, I, the Son of Man, am going to be scourged, beaten, mocked, but I will, crucified, but I will rise again on the third day. And yet, after everything happened that he said would happen, they still did not believe. Look at verse 12. After that, he appeared in another form to two of them as, as they walked and went into the country. We, we call that the, the two folks that were on their way on the road to Emmaus. Verse 13, and, when, and they went and told it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. These are the most unbelieving guys you'll ever meet. Luke chapter 24, verse 9, then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven. Remember, because Judas has now removed himself from the scene. Uh, and to all the rest, it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. And their words seemed like idle tales. They did not believe them. Now, does anybody have a translation of the Bible, a version of the Bible that actually says that they really did believe? Anybody? So are we all reading the same thing? Come on, if we're going to be close, you're going to have to keep up this morning. We're all reading the same thing? This is the answer for why he had to stick around another stinking 40 days to get these guys to believe. Let's, let's keep going. John chapter 20, starting in verse number 1. Now, the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter. And, and so let, let me just stop right there and just say that it's interesting. John, who's writing his gospel, uh, refers to himself throughout his gospel in the third person. So, so you'll often find, hear, read John talking about himself as the other disciple. So he'll say, you know, Peter and the other disciple. Well, that other disciple, he's talking about himself in the third person. Does that make sense? And then he also adds another little tidbit in there. Now, th let, me, let me see if you catch this. Okay. Then she ran, once again, verse 2, and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved. And said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter, therefore, went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together. Now, you, you know, if you watch the, the, the life of, of John and Peter in the Gospels, you know, there's a little friendly spiritual sibling rivalry going on between these two guys. You know, you kind of see the jostling a little bit from time to time in the Gospels. Watch this. Uh, what, what, what verse am I in? Four. So then they ran together, Peter and, and the other disciple outran Peter. Not saying who it was, but we know. <laughs> and came to the tomb first. Then the other disciple, who, by the way, got to the tomb first, <laughs> went in also, and he saw and believed. Uh-oh, finally somebody believes. Finally, one of these guys who had traveled with Jesus, ate, slept, walked, did ministry together for three years, finally one of them believed. So what was, the, what was different about 
John that was, that was able to break through the, the ice shelf ceiling of doubt and fear and anxiety and believe. Well, pastor, it says it right there. It says, and he saw and believed. Okay, that's, that's true. But, but let's, let's think about that. I'm sure that, that, that rattled his spiritual cage a little bit. I, I, I get that. But, but he didn't see Jesus. He's looking into an empty tomb. He sees the garments laid there. He had heard what, what had happened. But he doesn't see Jesus yet. So, so how many know there's opportunity for, for the enemy to, to get into his ear and say, well, I wonder where they took his body. I, I'm just laying that out there for you guys. So yeah, it's, 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 so, there's something deeper is what I'm saying going on here right now. Uh, some, something deeper. And John actually gives us a hint, not only in chapter 20 here, but other places in his gospel. Let, let's look at it. So we know that he said earlier in, in what we just read, he says, you know, he ran and came to Simon Peter and the other disciple, whom Jesus loved. There's a hint. John 13, 23. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved. John 19, 26. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by. John 21, verse 7. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved. John 21, 20. Then Peter, turning around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved. Did I, did I already tell you that John wrote the, the Gospel of John? It kind of, kind of reminds me of, of Exodus chapter, excuse me, Numbers chapter 12, verse 3. How many of you know Numbers 12, verse 3? I didn't think you did. Let me read it to you. Now the man Moses was very humble, more than all men who were on the face of the earth. <laughs> Moses wrote that. Right? Oh, Pastor Doug, are, are you saying that, that Moses and John uh, were walking around with their braggy pants on? Huh? No, not at all. We, we know that all Scripture is given by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Talk to me, somebody. So, so we know if, if they wrote it, it's because they were inspired by the Holy Spirit to do it. But so, there's something else going on here. Somewhere along the way, in that three-year period of being with Jesus, somewhere along the way, John picked up a revelation of the love that Jesus had for him. It doesn't mean that he didn't think that Jesus didn't love the other disciples either. It's just he, he, he had a revelation. Yeah, I know he loves them, but he, but, but, but he had a revelation. Jesus loves me. You can title me with his love. I'm the one that Jesus loves. It's a revelation. You couldn't drive it out of him. Uh, amen. Amen. Uh, Taff, Taffy and, and the guys, they sang that song by my request. There, there's a line in that song that they just sang called The Love of God from way back in the 1800s. Uh, the, verse, the verse is this. Could we with ink the oceans fill and were the skies of parchment made were every stalk on earth a quill and every one a scribe by trade to write the love of God above would drain the oceans dry. Nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. I'll tell you where I think they got that from, the writer. The last verse in John's gospel simply says this. Watch this. The last verse in, in his gospel. John 21, verse 25 and there are also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Amen. Now, I want you to think about something for a minute. Um, first of all, I just want you to say, I love you, Pastor Doug. <laughs> if someone was assigned to shadow Jesus his entire 33 years of living in the flesh here on the earth from the manger 
to the cross and record every conversation, every interaction, every communication, every act, every deed, every spoken word that Jesus engaged or was, was involved in for, for 33 years of him living in the earth and put it all into book form. You couldn't get enough books to fill the whole earth. It's just 33 years. Say it again. Say, I love you, Pastor Doug. Love you. Pastor, are you saying that somehow John is embellishing? Did John suddenly go rogue and stop being inspired by the Holy Spirit? No. No, every, every word from God. Every, every, all Scripture is given by inspiration of the Holy Ghost. But to understand the last verse in John, you've got to understand the first verse in John. How many of you know what John 1.1 1, 1 says? In the beginning was the Word. Who is the Word? Jesus. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Here, here's, what, here's what John is saying. If you were to write down every word, every interaction that Jesus had with every human being, he's God. From the beginning of time, you could, you could not fill the earth. I, you, you could not write enough books to fill the earth. It would overflow the earth. Why? Because he's God. He's God. John believed that Jesus was God. And he believed that Jesus loved him. And that believing helped his believing. It helped it. Uh, it actually encouraged his faith from, from, from time to time. Pastor Doug, that's the apostle. He was the disciple of Jesus. He, he, he was, he was handpicked by Jesus to be on his team. He, he wrote one of the gospels for crying out loud. He wrote some epistles. He, he wrote the book of Revelation. Th think of all of course, he holds a special place in, in Jesus' heart. Of course, Jesus is going to love him. Think about what he's done for the kingdom of God. But to think that the supreme Lord of the universe would think about me, much less love me at the same level he did the disciple, the apostle John, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I want you to think about something this morning. Jesus' entire earthly ministry took place in just three years. Some say between three, three and a half years. I know he was here for 33, but he only had the last three years to launch, promote, establish, and finish his entire earthly ministry while here on the earth. I want you to think about it from the moment that he came up out of those baptismal waters. The countdown clock that would set eternity in motion started ticking. The sinless, spotless Lamb of God is now on the scene and, and he only had three years to accomplish the purpose that he was sent to accomplish. I want you just to just think about that for a moment. Three years to, to, to have all those stories written in the Gospels, in the New Testament, to, to have everything that was written in the New Testament that would happen for his, his life. And he had three years to make his mark, to, to place his influence in the earth, to, to, to save humanity. Three years. Would you agree with me? that every moment, every minute, every second of those three years were pretty important. Yes. 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 Would you agree that they were pretty precious? Yes. Like when that, when that countdown clock towards eternity started to tick, 
the, the, the time he had to do what he, what he was called to do was precious. And yet he was interrupted over and over and over again. He's, he's walking with a man by the name of Jairus. Uh, Jairus' daughter is deathly sick. Jairus, by the way, is a very influential, well-known uh, mega leader of the synagogue. Don't you know a miracle like that would be exactly what Jesus Christ Evangelistic Association would need to, to get his fame spread across that entire region, to, to leave his mark as he's getting ready to save humanity? What an amazing agenda God put in front of him to, to leave his mark, to, to make his influence known. But then here comes this woman with the issue of blood. And she interrupts the Messiah uh, procession <laughs> because she's got an issue. We don't, we don't even know her name. She certainly doesn't have the notoriety or the, the prestige or, or, or uh, you know, the, the community exposure that Jairus had. All we know about her is that she's the woman with the issue of blood. Have you ever had an issue that seemed to consume your identity? Yeah. Like, like you, you can't, I mean, after a while, people, that's all they could talk about was your issue. Like, eventually, your issues started having issues. Your issues were having baby issues. <laughs> How many know what I'm talking about, right? This is this woman. And, 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 but but she, yet she presses through the, the crowd. The Bible says, and she, she has one belief that if I could but touch the hem of his garment, I can be made whole. And, and, so, and so she's pressing through and she reaches out and she, and she touches and the, 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 the hem of his garment and all of a sudden Jesus is like, whoa, whoops. I got to put the whole kingdom of God on hold while I stop and take care of this one little possibility. Uh, one day Jesus is preaching. Now, now would, you, would you agree with me that if he's only got three years to accomplish everything that he needed to accomplish to save humanity, that every sermon that Jesus preached is probably like the most important sermon ever preached on the face of the earth. Right? He's preaching. He's preaching a sermon. And, 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 and the Bible talks about these four crazy friends. How many have at least four crazy friends? How many are sitting? Never mind. Don't even ask the question right now. Okay. Okay, four crazy friends. Try to get their friend who's lame. I see some of you doing this, you know, like. <laughs> so, so they try to get their friend in there to see Jesus. He's preaching. They can't get in the door. You know the story. They, they, they climb up on the roof. They pull the man up on the roof, you know. They, they cut through the roof. And they start lowering their friend down. And, and the Bible says he lowers right down in, in front so Jesus can see him. And Jesus stops preaching like the most important sermon in the world. And he stops preaching. Right? And Jesus looks at him and he looks up, the Bible says, and it says, and when he saw their faith, whose faith? Those four crazy friends who had enough guts, gall, and audacity to say, if I could just get my friend down there to see Jesus, I know that he can touch his life. And Jesus is like, I know, listen, this is the most important sermon to ever be preached in the history of mankind, but I'm going to put the whole kingdom of God on hold for, because I see one more possibility right here. I want you to think about blind Bartimaeus. He's standing on, sitting on the side of the road. He's got his tin cup. Jesus is passing by, and you can just see the disciples. Get out of the way. Move out of the way. Messiah's coming through. Everybody, get out of the way. Messiah's coming. And, 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 and the Bible says, Bartimaeus, when he heard that Jesus was passing by, cried with a loud voice, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And, and the disciples were like, shh, don't, don't bother the master. He's, he's got important people to see. We're going in a, to a big meeting. He's got he's to preach over here. We've got important places to go, important people to see. Shh, 
don't, don't bother him now. But the Bible says he cried all the more. And they were indignant towards him. All he did was cry out loud. He got a miracle for crying out loud. And Jesus, he's on the way, he stops him. Whoa, let him come to me. Let him come to me. What, what was he saying? Put, put the whole agenda of the kingdom on hold right now because I got this possibility I'm going to deal with right here. Are you tracking with me this morning? I'm telling you, I, 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 might, I might just keep preaching until this starts to ring out in your spirit today. So, so if you got plans for lunch, just put them on hold right now. I got to accomplish something today. <clears throat> Would you agree with me that Calvary is the climactic moment of humanity where the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. From, from the first time that a man fell in the garden all the way to Mount Calvary, everything that had happened had been in preparation for this one moment right here. And Jesus is hanging on the cross between two thieves. There's one on his left who curses him and says, if you're really the son of God, come down. Save yourself. Get yourself off this cross. And by the way, get us off here too. The thief on his, on his right is, you know, offended by that. He says, hey, leave him alone. He hadn't done anything to you. We're, 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 we're thieves. We deserve to be up here. But this man has done nothing wrong. This guy who's on his right, this thief, probably never went to church one day in his life. He, he, he probably never went to Sunday school. He, he never sang any gospel songs. He never sang in a choir. He, never, he, never probably, he probably never gave one dollar to an offering. This guy probably never served God or honored God one day in his entire life. And his only spiritual experience on the earth ever, his entire spiritual experience could all be summed up in nine words. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And in that moment, I think Jesus was like, hold it. <laughs> I mean, would you say that Calvary is pretty important? Amen. And yet Jesus is like, hold it. I know this is the climax of my purpose. I know this is the grand finale of, of why I've come to the earth in human form. I know this is it. This is my Mount Calvary. But I see one more opportunity. And Jesus, with those incredible eyes of love, looks over to that thief and says, look at me right now. Look at me. This day, you're going to be with me in paradise. Can I, can I just preach this a little bit? Jesus dies. The Bible says he goes into, talks about this place called paradise. I, I can really get into that. There's, there's different words that we've heard. There's, there's Sheol, there's Hades, there's different places that represent different sections of it. I, I don't have time. I wish I did. I'm sorry. But just, just kind of work with me right now. He goes into this place. And uh, actually, I think the psalmist actually prophesied about it, right? He said, open up the doors, you, you everlasting gates, and the king of glory will come in. And of course, they open up, and Jesus, he's died, and he goes into this place, and, I, and he goes to the place where the devil is. I, I, I used to teach that Jesus had suffered in that place. He, he did not, by the way. I, I've learned. I've got, God has brought me up and taught me some things, but, but, but he does. 
th- there, is, there is something that he has to deal with. And, and he goes to where the enemy is and he, he strips the keys of death and of hell. The Bible says he, he dismantled principalities and powers, made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Just before he turns to leave, I think he kung fu's the devil right in the Adam's apple for good measure. And he turns around and he starts moving through and, and he gets to a place where, let's just say it like this, um, where the righteous dead are held. Those saints from the Old Testament, they're all in there and people like, he's high-fiving, I can just picture Jesus high-fiving Moses <laughs> and Elisha and Elijah and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Right? Samuel, Esther, David has already gotten his clothes off. He's dancing naked. <laughs> Jesus, like, put your robe on. Three Hebrew children are probably doing the Macarena, you know, just shouting for God, you know. <laughs> and Jesus is just going through, and there's like a celebration. And guess who's holding on to the belt of his robe? the first person to ever be covered by the blood. You heard of the Grinch who stole Christmas? This is the thief who stole heaven. And I I just picture him right now holding on to that belt. (laughs) Right? Like glory to God. Amen. And you think Jesus wouldn't love you? This guy never honored God one day in his life. And you think you think Jesus wouldn't love you the way he loved John? True story. Um, and I promise I'll close with this right here. Guys broke down on the side of the road, hoods up. He's standing out there looking in there. He's obviously got problems and. And all of a sudden, this, this true story, this stretch, this limousine comes pulling up next to him. The door opens up, and a guy gets out, and he's got this pinstripe suit dressed to the hilt, you know. Looks like he just stepped out of GQ magazine, <laughs> dressed like immaculately, you know. He's obviously a man of great wealth and influence, and he's obviously probably going somewhere of very important. And, and the man says to him, he says, are you having some issues? He says, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I stopped for a little bit and, and I tried to turn, turn, turn it on. It won't start. I, I don't know. And he goes, you mind, you mind if I take a look at it? I know a little bit of something about the cars. He said, yeah, sure. And so the guy takes off his super expensive jacket, take his, takes his cufflinks off, rolls up his sleeves, hands his jacket and his cufflinks to his chauffeur, and he gets down under the hood and he's messing around with some things. And, and then he tells the guy, he said, listen, get... Get into the car when I when I tell at you when I tell you to just just start the ignition. Start start the. Some of you young people, it, that means turn the car on. I know you're thinking you know you got to talk to it or push it, but never. Anyway, so he starts fire. So he gets out behind the wheel and the and, and the, guy, the guys tinker around. And a couple a couple moments later, says, "Okay, hit it." And the guy turns the key. And the car comes on. And, and the man walks around, he's wiping his grease off his, his hands. He said, that'll do it. I think you're okay now. And the guy's like, I, I got to pay you for that. I got to give you something. He said, no, I'm okay. I'm good. I'm good. He says, w- would you, would you, can I ask you a question? Who are you? Why did you help me? The man said, my name is Henry Ford. And I made that car. And I can't stand to see one of my creations broke down on the side of the road. And I'm just saying this morning, if you think for one minute that your creator wants to see you stuck, broke, busted, and disgusted on the side of the road away from your purpose, I'm telling you, you don't know him very well. I'm saying you gotta believe that he sees who you are. He knows what you're going through. You are God's creative force. You are create. He created you. He knew your unformed substance 
before a year, before you ever were, before you ever breathed one breath, He had purpose all over your life. And He doesn't want to see you broke down on the side of the road. He loves you. He loves you with an everlasting love. Amen. I, 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 I was watching, I, I was reading in there, Jesus was praying one day. I, I know I'm going to close, I promise, I promise. And Jesus was in there praying one day. And he prayed, Father, show them that you love them as much as you love me. Now, I'm telling you guys, had I not read that in the Bible, I never would have believed it. If you would have you told me that, I would have called you a liar. There's no way God could love me as much as he loved his son, Jesus. But Jesus prayed, Father, show them. Show them that you love them. Show them that you love Charlotte. Show, show Pam that you love her. Show Griselda that you love her. Show Zach that you love her. That you love him. Show, 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 show them that you love them as much as you love me. Every head bowed, every eye closed this morning. Father God, I know that we've tapped into something. We've, we've rattled some hard strings today. God, I just pray that there's someone who may have come into this place or possibly watching online who has struggled with because of behavior, because of the past failures or disappointments, to, to think that, that, the, that the God of the universe could, could really love them after all they've done. God, show them. Show them that you love them. As much as you love Jesus, as much as you love John, show them. I pray, Father God, drive that, that, that stain out of their heart for forever in Jesus' name, I pray. Right now, if you're watching, maybe, maybe you're here in service or you're watching online, you have not received Jesus as your personal Savior. Simply want to invite you to, to do that we're not asking you to do something like join a church or become a member of a ministry or donate and sign up for anything. Just it's, 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 it's an expression of your faith. It's surrender. It's saying, simply, simply pray in this prayer. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm in need of a savior. I'm asking you to forgive me of all my sin. I'm asking you to come into my heart and life. By faith, I make you my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Listen, if you prayed that very simple prayer, we believe you got born again today. We have something we want to give you. We, we want to send you on your journey. Maybe that was a point of renewal or recommitment in your life. I don't know. Now, if you're watching online, do me a favor, will you please click on the comment link, say, Pastor Doug, I did it. I raised my hand. I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. We'd appreciate you, you letting us know so we can help you and reach out to you. Anyway, God bless you guys today.